What's going on everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nation's blogandtheboys.com. We hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, practicing social distancing and looking to get through these days much sooner than later. And the last couple of days have been very interesting for the Dallas Cowboys. Now we're about to do something that everybody loves, right? Everybody loves grades, feels like school again, feels like we just got out of lunch and we're here. We got a full belly, just like the Dallas Cowboys do with good players. Now, it should be said that the Dallas Cowboys and their draft process was a little bit different than in years past. Obviously, they have a new head coach. Mike McCarthy's in charge now, different coordinator at defense, obviously different position coaches. So things were going to naturally be different than they were in the Jason Garrett era. However, this entire process is run by Will McClay, the Dallas Cowboys vice president of player personnel. So in a lot of capacities, this was very similar, except for one key thing. We've seen the Cowboys in years past prioritize need above a lot of other things. We've seen them go after positions where they needed players. This is how you end up in situations where you take somebody like Taco Charlton in 2017 or Tristan Hill in 2019. We've seen the Cowboys focus on need too much. And in the NFL, as crazy as it sounds, the whole best player available thing doesn't really happen all too often, except for when it comes to the 2020 Dallas Cowboys. These Cowboys approached the draft just simply saying you know what let's get whatever we can you ever decide about you know making a meal for dinner you say i'm gonna go make this i'm gonna make sticks i'm gonna make steaks with bell peppers and potatoes and you go to the grocery store and the bell peppers they're gross the potatoes they're not good the steak the meat isn't good quality why would you say well who cares how good the quality or everything is i'm gonna make this anyway no what you would do is you would go to the grocery store and you would say well the steak isn't that great today but you know what looks good that piece of salmon that looks really good those bell peppers man they don't look great but that zucchini sure does look sharp potatoes i don't know but i could always make some mac and cheese by the way if you make a good mac and cheese truffle send me a recipe but for real the dallas cowboys approached the draft this way and that's why when cd lamb oklahoma wide receiver was on the board at 17 overall they said this dude's our sixth ranked player who cares about need we don't need to necessarily get an edge rush right now sure caleb on chase on is there but cd lamb is there and that's why the cd lamb pick that gets a big old a plus that's right the dallas cowboys did the right thing they took the best football player and that's something that we would see throughout the rest of the draft you know in the second round a lot of people thought okay maybe the cowboys they, they were a little bit flashy they were a little bit you know a little bit too best player available maybe they're gonna go need in the second round no 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 my friends the cowboys saw alabama cornerback trevon Diggs fall all the way to them at 51 overall they said guess what it happened again a really good football player is there who cares it just so happens that we need a cornerback so this is a marriage of every single philosophy and principle that we hold near and dear to our hearts. And that's how the Dallas Cowboys ended up with Trevon Diggs, another A plus in the third round. And this one's really interesting because the Cowboys did take Tristan Hill last year with their first pick, the second round selection, not having a first due to trading it for Amari Cooper. A defensive tackle is a position, you know, in general that we haven't seen the Cowboys invest a whole lot in, except for in 2020. The Dallas Cowboys signed Joe McCoy and Don Terry Poe in free agency, and when Oklahoma's Neville Gallimore was there, they said, look, we know that we've got these two free agents. We know that we've got Tristan Hill, but you know what else we know? We know that a really good football player is on the board. Let's take him anyway. And this is really maybe in some ways my favorite pick because it's the Cowboys saying, we don't care that we spent a second round pick at this position last year. We're going to take the best possible players to put together the best overall product. And that is the smart way to build football teams. Now, moving on to the fourth round, again, cornerback was undeniably a need for the Dallas Cowboys. And they got really fortunate that really good ones were there when they decided to take them and add them to their cornerback group. That happened in the fourth round when Tulsa cornerback Reggie Robinson II was there and just like Neville Gallimore before him, he gets an A+. That's right. I'm feeling super generous today. A+, plus is all over the place. A+, plus for CeeDee Lamb, A+, plus for Trevon Diggs, A+, plus for Neville Gallimore, and A+, plus for Reggie Robinson II. I think it should be said, and this is starting to be said by a lot of people, kind of the mainstream media is starting to come around to this, that maybe Reggie Robinson might be better in 2020 than Trevon Diggs. And that's not a knock on Diggs. That's just saying that Reggie Robinson is a little bit better right now. Diggs has more traits. He can translate better. Maybe he'll grow into a better player. But right now, in the here and now, Reggie Robinson might be the better overall product. Now, 
the only pick right now that isn't gonna get an A plus, and because it just it cost it just a little bit too much for me. I'm just kidding. It gets an A plus. The Dallas Cowboys traded back up into the fourth round to take Wisconsin center Tyler Biotish. Now this is actually probably my favorite pick. I had ESPN's Will Kane from, of course, the Will Kane show on my podcast recently, and he made the point to me that this is the Cowboys going up and getting what looks to be a would be starter. It, it figures that Tyler would be starting at center for the Cowboys in a year, maybe two years. But what I love about this pick is everything that's associated. The Cowboys traded one of their two fifth round selections in this past draft, plus their fifth round pick in 2021. Now the Cowboys know that because they lost players like Byron Jones and Robert Quinn, that they're going to get a lot of compensatory picks next offseason. I love the Cowboys already dealing those away. It's them operating at a higher level. They're proverbially playing chess while everybody else is playing checkers. The other thing I love about this, you jump up with the Philadelphia Eagles. I love the willingness and the aggressiveness to go up and get it. The other thing, and this needs to be mentioned a lot, that NFL rosters per the new collective bargaining agreement have grown from 53 players. They are now 55 players. Additionally, normally, players uh, on a team's roster on game day, you can only have 46 of those. Now you can have 48 because you raised overall rosters, so there are now 48 active players on game day. Of those two new additions to game day active rosters, one of them must be an offensive lineman. So by rule, the Dallas Cowboys, like every other NFL team, must have another offensive lineman active in 2020 and beyond. Guess what the Cowboys just got? A brand new offensive lineman who figures to be awesome, hopefully in the near future. I love the Cowboys leaning into this. This shows, again, a deeper understanding of everything going on here. So another A+, plus. shout out to Tyler Biotish. Now in the fifth round, this is perhaps, in some ways, the most impressive Cowboys pick because it's the biggest overall value. NFL Network's Daniel Jeremiah tweeted out earlier this week, grading every single round and assigning the biggest overall value taken in the round. Now, the Cowboys landed Bradley and I, Utah edge rusher. Daniel Jeremiah had him ranked as his 75th overall player and the Dallas Cowboys got him at pick 179. That is an overall net value of plus 104. It is the biggest overall net value that a single player got throughout the entire 2020 NFL draft is graded by NFL Network's Daniel Jeremiah. I love that. I love the Cowboys looking at it and to their, you know, I don't want to say credit or their demise, the Cowboys did pass on Bradley a couple of times. It took until them seeing him on the board at 179 saying, we can't do it again. We cannot pass on him. Let's go get a very good football player and let's have a good time. No sixth round pick for the Cowboys, but obviously they did take what might be the greatest quarterback of all time in the seventh round in James Madison's Ben DiNucci. Here's what I love about this pick too. All right, if you didn't catch the drift of this show, Bradley and I gets an A+. I'm going to give Ben DiNucci just a B plus because it's a seventh round pick. You don't know a lot about it, but what I love about it is it's Mike McCarthy getting his guy. Mike McCarthy talked a lot about wanting to get a quarterback to grow, to develop, to groom, whatever you want to call it. And he went and got his guy. B plus. Overall, this class is incredible for the Dallas Cowboys. And it should be said, again, that we aren't going to really know a lot about this class for a couple of years. You know, you can grade the class on paper, what it looks like a week after the draft. And from that perspective, it's an A. In fact, I'm just going to give it an A plus because I had a peanut butter and banana sandwich for lunch and I'm in a good mood. A plus Dallas Cowboys. Well done in the 2020 NFL draft. This was a work of art. And this is an example of what happens when you draft the best overall player and you do not draft or need. It should be something that every NFL team does, except if you're one of the other 31 NFL teams and you're watching this, don't do that. Just draft for need. Let the Dallas Cowboys do this and everything will work itself out. Uh, look, we are living in the good times. All right, The good times are here. It seems like Mike McCarthy can be trusted as the Dallas Cowboys head coach and that is a lot of fun. And we're going to have a lot of fun for the foreseeable future here on the official Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. Make sure you check out blogandtheboys.com for the latest and greatest in the world of America's team. Make sure you subscribe to the Blog and the Boys podcast. You can hear all of our different shows. You get at the very least two episodes every day. And make sure to follow me on social media. I am at RJ Ochoa on both Twitter and Instagram. Oh, and last thing, make sure you have yourself an excellent day. You know why? Because you deserve it. We'll see you next time.